So, welcome back after the break. Um, we have now a talk about the new Qt location module, which has a tech preview in 5.5, if I got that correct, and will be released in 5.6. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm looking forward to it because I did some location-based coding this year, and I'm not sure I would have done it if I would have known that there is an upcoming uh, module. So, I hand over to Laszlo. And Okay, thank you very much. So yes, I'm last Ogoch and my voice is a bit uh, bad, but nevertheless, I hope I can, I can get the message through. So yeah, I work in Oslo. You might have seen some of my talks yesterday. And you know, I'm mainly working in the area of graphics, embedded Linux and you know, but uh, still I do a lot of things on a wide variety of platforms and lately I've been also touching some things in Qt positioning and Qt location. So now we have this uh, short introduction uh, regarding these exciting modules. So this is a, mainly a live coding exercise here. But yeah, we'll have a few slides just to you know go through the basics. So the real interesting thing now is that cute location. So the location box down there, which includes maps and navigation and places, this is now declared like a proper stable API in Qt 5.6. And this is new, right? Because in Qt 5.5, this was only a tech preview. It's not new in the sense that, uh, you know, it's been available for a long, long time. And uh, cute positioning, which is really about getting a location, like say the latitude, longitude, altitude, that was already stable for quite some time, like since Qt 5.2, I think. But uh, now it's really, so Qt 5.6 is the time when, you know, everything comes together in, in one beautiful package. So it's all there, all supported, all final. The diagram there may, might be a bit confusing because, you know, if you look at the source tree in Qt 5, of course, both positioning and location are under a Qt location umbrella. But make no mistake, these are two separate modules, technically. Yeah, that's just uh, good to keep in mind in case you want to tinker with the cute, you know, sources that they are all under a cute location. <clears throat> so, positioning, some of you might know this. So really, this has both C++ and QML APIs. <clears throat> the C++ API is a bit more wide, so it has things, uh, you know, less often used things like area monitoring. But, uh, you know, the main thing is really just to, to have a position source which provides you with updates. And how, where the data comes from, that's usually up to the backends. So, you know, it can be a GPS, Wi-Fi based, IP based, whatever. Uh, and, uh, of, of course, we have some ways to use fake data. So if you have some NMEA records, like in a text file, you can also use that as your source. So you can just play that back. So right now, when it comes to the real backends, we have you know, su support on Linux for GeoClue, which is a DBus-based service. Of course, Android and iOS, obviously, since mobile devices, you know, they usually have a GPS, so yeah, it's, it's pretty important there. In Qt 5.6, we have finally enabled the core location plugin also for OS X. It wasn't there previously, and, you know, still it can be useful since you can still use Wi-Fi-based positioning, like on a Mac, for example. And we recently also got WinRT support so using the Windows Devices Geolocation API. Yeah, this is really intended for, intended for Windows Phone. Uh, yeah, there's some work ongoing regarding Windows desktop support. So this includes both the older, like you know, Windows 7, and well, let's see what we do for Windows 10. And now, the new thing. So, location. Yes, 
the order of things is very interesting. So, of course, the most exciting thing is, is the second bullet point, which is really the QML API for showing a map. So this will be the map QML type, you know, a map element. Yeah, we'll see this in action soon, because it's cool. But there's more, because, you know, there's, for example, geocoding, which is, say, you have an address or, you know, a string, and you want a location, like, like the position, the coordinates for that. That's geocoding. Again, we have C++, C++ and QML APIs for that. And then comes navigation, of course, which, you know, given a set of waypoints, you might want to, you know, get back a route. You know, consisting of multiple segments. And of course, you might want to visualize that on the map, which is, you know, really interesting. And finally, there's the Places API, which is about, you know, you give a search term and say, give me the, I don't know, pubs within one kilometer, and then you get back some results. D depending on the service, this might include descriptions, ratings, whatever, that really depends on the service. And when it comes to the backends, you know we have three currently. So OpenStreetMap, and here, these are the, you know, kind of fully featured ones, because they have support for all of the things I just mentioned. And there's a Mapbox plugin, which, is, which currently only provides maps. And all of this, this is raster-based tiled maps. So like the vector map story, that's something for the future. And it's all online. So yeah, the vector map support and the offline map support, that's, uh, well, that's basically being researched. So let's see what happens regarding those. And now, you know, we want to see this in action, right? So we will just create something like there using Qt 5.6, Qt Creator running on a Mac, we will, you know, show some maps. Yes? Okay, much better. Thank you. So, here I have this wonderful application consisting of, you know, highly complex code at the moment. Yes, I have a QQQ that just, you know, loads something from a QML file, and yes. So, first things first, you know, I'm, I'm having the necessary imports for cute positioning and cute location. So, how do I get my position? So, while this seems to be difficult, it's not, you know, position source. We set active to true because we want to start getting updates immediately. And one, once, you know, we get this on position change signal, we can, you know, let's just print it. Mm, yeah. Actually, much better. <clears throat> so, this is already impressive since, as you, as you can see, my Wi Fi is enabled. So, the, then running on OS 10, that's pretty much essential. So, Wi Fi is enabled, so it gives us, you know, some more or less accurate location, which is awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that was easy. Now, let's add the map. And this is when this is when things are getting really <clears throat> cool. So here I need to start <coughs> caring about plugins, right? The backends I mentioned. So I'm going to use OpenStreetMaps because right now that's the only plugin which is which can be used without without signing up or you know getting an API key. So yeah, this is the one which can you know freely be used by anyone. So. Let's just use it. And uh, yeah, let's just, for now, let's just position or map somewhere. I will just type in some magic coordinates. We'll see where that leads us. Yes, and we want to zoom in. Okay, 
So, <clears throat> yes. Let's see what happens. Yes. Well, oh yeah, it actually, this is actually like my Ostuen in Oslo, you know, kind of where I live, more or less. And, you know, this is already kind of a fully featured map. So with the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. We can move around. And of course, through the network, it's, it's, it's fetching the tiles from OpenStreetMaps. Under the hood, there's also some caching, of course, since we don't want to download the same tiles over and over again because the services won't like us then. So yes, we have some disk-based cache to, to really prevent overloading the services. And yeah, it's there. So in the lower left corner, of course, we comply usually that the, the services usually have some requirements that you have to show some sort of copyright or message, you know, to, to indicate the source. So yeah, we can also comply with those requirements pretty easily, which is of course imp important. Good. So this is awesome, but you know, that's not quite enough usually because yes, you might want to really put something on the map, you know, the usual markers, for example, or maybe a custom QQuick item. So there are two important uh, elements to note. So the, the simp simplest is the map circle, which is really that we want to just, you know, mark a given area. So like the radius is in meters here, so like I'm marking the, like a one kilometer radius of a given, given position. Well, let's copy that for now. Well, yes, it kind of works, so now, well, anyway, we are centering on the same position, so yes, we have this wonderful circle. Well, okay, that might not be so useful, but, you know, changing the color and so on, where you can get interesting things done. But the really common thing is this. So map, map quick item. And this is really, uh, the, 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 so this is now something really powerful because, hmm. Okay, let's still use the same coordinates, because this is the thing that allows you to put, put uh, any, you know, cute quick subtree, you know, li like an item and possibly child items onto the map. So the most common case will be that uh, you'll be using an image. So in, in, in my case, I simply have a PNG file. But like I said, so this does not have to be an image. And of course, it can have children. And it can even be interactive, like you cannot the mouse area covering the item, and then you can react when, for example, the user clicks or taps on it. And uh, there's this anchor point thingy because I have this, uh, well, my image is done that way that, you know, the bottom of the arrow is you know, at, the, at the bottom middle, at the bottom of the image. So, running this, awesome. So we have this marker there, which is uh, now pretty cool because of, even if I zoom out, it's there, which is, you know, what we expect usually. So, yeah, it's, it's, it just works and it's pretty easy to get any quick item in there. You know. Now, Okay, let's move away from Oslo a bit. So, now let's connect the two that my pos whenever the pos position source gives us an update, we will now simply center or map there. And I'm just wondering what happens. Ah, yes, this is something else. Yeah, this looks like Berlin. So yes, it's mm, more or less guessed or location pretty well. Yes, BCC, awesome. So yeah, it's there. Okay. Next, let's geocode. Because right now, you know, you can show a map, you can put down markers, but how do you find a place if you, if you only know the address? Well, it's 
not going to be very difficult. So again, of course, the geocoding could use a different plugin. In, in my case, I just use the same plugin as the map because OpenStreetMaps is good enough. And well, what else could we query but the location of the cute company office in Oslo? Yes. And well, that was it basically. Now the only thing left to do is that when we get results, which is again a signal, location changed. Well, if we got any like a non-empty set, then we, we will simply move our marker to well for the to the first hit. I might need to name this. Yes, and finally, now I will just trigger the query manually. Okay. So yes, this is in Berlin, but, 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 let's zoom out. Yes, something is there. Ah. Of course, I would need a proper mouse. But indeed, that's now a different location in Oslo. Oh, yes, I'm jumping back because my position updates are enabled. So every time the OS 10 gives me a position update, it positions back to Berlin. Nonetheless, yes, the marker is correct. So that is indeed our offices in New Dalen, Oslo. So even geocoding worked. Isn't that awesome? And finally, what else could be the last thing but Navigation show. Let's, so let's visualize a route. Again, it's not going to be very difficult, although this is based on the familiar, you know, model item view pattern. So I will have a model because a route consists of multiple segments. So that's similar to how you would work with a list model and a list view. So again, I'm using the same plugin. And then I will have a query, which is a road query. Yes, and yeah, to simplify things, it's in when my component is ready, I will just now manually add some waypoints that I want to get from point A to point B. So say, well, yeah, this will be actually our position right here, right now the BCC, and then where do we want to go? Well, as you can guess, we want to go to or the cute company offices in Berlin, not in Oslo, because that might be quite a long journey. Yes, again, update will actually, yep, Update will actually, you know, trigger the query. So we will start communicating through the backend with the remote service. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's enough. We don't need more. So this is really the query part. But of course, we don't yet have anything visualized. And for that, there's yet another type we can use, which is map item view. So a map, map item view need, takes a model, so just like a list view may take some whatever model. So the route model, and like, just like with list views, we'll have a delegate, which in our case, we'll, we'll use this very handy built-in map route thing, which is you know, very good to easily visualize these, these routes. So the route data that, that's coming from the model and yeah, let's just make it blue and use some not very thin line. Like, oh, 45 is way too much. I mean, four is probably better. So, yes, indeed. We are positioned in the BCC. And yes, there's our route. It's, you know, it's pretty simple. So there's our start and, you know, we have the Blue line leading, oh, okay, just, it's time to get rid of this thing. Oh, 
which is not necessarily a bad idea because now we are back in Oslo. Nonetheless, aha, the blue thing. Yes, so this is the location of the cute company offices in Berlin, not very far, in Adlershof, not very far from Schönefeld Airport. So our query for, the, for this route from OpenStreetMaps worked fine. So yeah, basically from this point on, it's up to your imagination what you do with this because you know you can put things onto the map, you can show show routes. Like I said, there's the places API which you can you know use as an alternative to geocoding, maybe to discover places. So yeah, a lot of possibilities. So there, yeah, just try it out. Yeah, I guess we'll use the remaining time for some questions. Hopefully there are some. Is there any support for country-specific coordinates like the Swiss grid or the Swedish grid? Uh, not really. Okay. So this is, I know, so basically what we have now is similar to what you get with the popular, you know, web services. And, you know, we only use the, you know, standard latitude, longitude. We are using this web Mercator type of projection, so it's, you know, yeah, similar to what you would get with services like Google Maps or Bing Maps and so on. So no, no special support at the moment. Well, let's see. So it really depends. It came up already in the past that, uh, you know, we, we might want to support some other projections. Let's see. But there are no immediate plans or no clear plans for, you know, doing any, anything more. But who knows, it might happen. <laughs> Yes, there. As far as I see, there's a plugin for OpenStreetMaps and some other map providers. Is it possible to provide custom maps, for example, for indoor navigation or similar? So, custom maps, well, of, of course, anyone is free to do uh, a new backend. Like, you know, that's like this, that's just, just a plugin, which would then provide map tiles in any way you want. So, yes, of course, that's possible. You can do your own backend. And then the data can come from wherever. But there's no possibility, so you said there's a plugin already existing to import a custom file. Well, you mean like to, yeah, use a file. So, yes, like the offline map story is not yet there. So, so the existing backends are always online. Well, unless we, we have already downloaded the tiles, but generally speaking, of course, they will need the network. No, <laughs> and uh, yes, like I said, especially the map type, that's really, that's a cute quick item. And, you know, there's, at least at the moment, there are no plans to either provide a C++ API and there are no plans to really expose this to widgets. I mean, of course, you can use it in a widget-based UI through QQuick widget, but, yeah, but of course it will it will still be relying on Qt Quick because, yeah, that's just just the best way really to do the rendering. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm not that familiar with that, but you know there are a lot of. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but if if it was like show, about showing maps, I mean there are a lot of options. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and uh, there are also other like of course we know that there are alternatives like to cute locations. So think of the. Hmm? Okay. So the question was about alternatives like lib marble. And yes, of course, there are alternatives, you know, that's one, which is probably some widget-based thingy. Or, of course, like, you know, that like Mapbox have, have released their, you know, OpenGL-based renderer, which is, again, an alternative if you are only interested in Mapbox stuff. So, yes, it's, you know, this is not the only way to get maps into your Qt applications, obviously. It's just, you know, one way, which is part of Qt. <laughs> so. Yes, do you have any plans for online maps? 
Well, yes, but no clear plans. So it's not exactly clear how that would look because, uh, of, of course, the concern is that this is now all raster maps and, you know, the size of the data is getting a bit too big. So the offline maps would really be interesting in combination with vector maps. But, yeah, that uh, remains to be seen what we do there. Sorry? Indoor maps. Uh, no, so no indoor maps. There's no specific plan, so it's uh, well up to the backends what they provide. So, yeah, that's all. So no specific plans for that in the in the framework at least. Yes. So, is there any API or are there plans for API to access the underlying vector data? So, what, what kind of metadata are you? Vector data. Oh, vector data. No, and there. This this is our raster. So, what we are getting here is really raster images, like tiles. Yes, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, that's why I said the vector map story that remains to be seen, but this has nothing to do with that because this really requests, you know, tiles, images from OpenStreetMap using the REST APIs. So it will not really get or not, not give you any vector data. Okay. okay, I think that's all for now. So thank you very much. So